Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional. And uh, for this morning's devotional, uh, we wanted to, I wanted to look at Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 52 uh, and 53. And um, as we continue on in the, the Holy Week devotionals and looking at the events of Holy Week, um, this morning I wanted to focus on the cross. Uh, and, and the passage of, of Isaiah is um, a prophecy, uh, a foretelling of what the cross would be like. Uh, interesting that there's not a lot of description of the, the cross event in the gospel. It's very short for something so significant as the death of the Son of God and the sacrifice for all of humanity. It's very short in the gospels, not very descriptive. Um, as a matter of fact, for example, uh, we don't know that, uh, we would not know it, that Jesus' hands were nailed and his feet were nailed if it were not for the reference, I believe it's in John's Gospel, where John or Jesus looks at Thomas and says, touch my hands and my, my side, and, um, and talks about the, the nail piercings. So it doesn't actually talk about the hammer being na the nail. So it does not go into the graphic detail, but go into graphic detail in the Gospels. But in the prophecies, uh, there are some very graphic details about what happened to our Savior um, when he um, went through this act of love uh, for us. And so I wanted to kind of look at some, some of those verses uh, this, this morning together. Um, uh, let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for your love for us. And as we continue to uh, uh, follow the path of Jesus uh, that he took in Passion Week, we ask that your grace would be upon us as we think about the crucifixion and um, may we not read these passages lightly together um, but let these passages in a sense bring to us uh, a new revelation of what was done for us of this uh, sea that was crossed for us as Jesus uh, bridged this gulf between us and you um, give us these graces in Jesus name amen so uh, this morning, as, as we look at Isaiah chapter 52, um, if you have your Bibles with you, and this is, I would encourage you to, um, to uh, study this and, and meditate on this, on this, uh, this day. Uh, this, this, these, uh, this is a reference to like what the Bible calls the suffering servant. And uh, it's a prophecy of Jesus being the suffering servant. Um, but it, it's a reference to, to the cross. Now the cross, um, today as we look at the cross we see a piece of wood that's just kind of it's got a ver, uh, kind of a, a vertical line that's crossed by a horizontal line and we have these it's we've made them into these attractive pieces of jewelry and uh, we wear them around our necks we put them on top of our churches and we have these um, these symbols these these crosses as a symbol of Christianity, and and we we kind of pretty it up a little bit, but it's really it was really a gruesome thing. It was a it was a symbol that, uh, that pictured the Roman method of execution, as uh, as they uh, impaled basically people on these wooden crosses. Um, it was crucifixion was something that um, was done by the Assyrians and the Persians and the Greeks. Um, and and uh, they they had kind of the, cruci the the crucifixions were kind of continued and maybe even perfected by the Romans. Um, it was it was a way of impaling your enemies high on a on a couple of pieces of wood, uh, and and in so doing they wanted them uh, you know those who uh, you know opposed them they wanted to say well this is what happens to you if if you oppose us and so they wanted this crucifixion this gruesome death to be a spectacle. To keep people in, in line, and that was really what it was designed, uh, kind of to do. Um, and so we 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 kind of these days in this in this modern these modern times we kind of try to pretty up the cross. We put a coat of varnish on it, and we make it to, you know out of gold or silver and that kind of thing. Um, and we don't talk about the the gruesomeness of the event. Um, well, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, um, highlights some of these some of these uh, issues. And there's more than that I'm going to read for you, but I would encourage you to, to read it. It is hard reading because it's, this is something that Jesus went through uh, for us. And this is Isaiah chapter 52. Um, I'm going to start in verse 14, then I'll drop down. Uh, but uh, verse 14 says, Just as, as uh, there were many 
who were appalled at him. His appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form marred beyond human likeness. And this, uh, this is a reference to the beating that he took prior to uh, the cross. Um, verse Chapter 53, verse uh, 2, uh, halfway through, he go, it says, He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. In other words, the prophet was saying, this is, Jesus uh, was one of those in his, in his suffering, his suffering was so intense, it was something you look away from, you hide your face from it, you just kind of look, I don't want to look at that, I don't want to see that. And so um, Jesus' suffering was, was marked by how despicable it really was. And verse 4, surely he took up our infirmities and he car carried our, sorrow, our sorrows, our sorrows. Yet he, we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. And verse 4 there is something you need to meditate on it. It's just uh, very deep in what it's saying to us. Um, he, he took up, he in his crucifixion, in the crucifixion and in his sufferings, he was suffering for us. And we looked at it and we said, how appalling, how horrible this person. He must have done something horrible to do what he's deserved. And it's just ironic that he was taking our sufferings and we were kind of looking down on him for the suffering. Verse 5 uh, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. That's a, that's a phrase you need to memorize and meditate on. The punishment that he endured brought us peace. That's the trade of the gospel. He took the punishment. We got the peace. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. That's a powerful uh, version Old Testament version of the gospel, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord God has laid on Jesus, on him, the iniquity of us all. And so um, Isaiah uh, goes into uh, great lengths to describe, and there, there's more in Isaiah, there's more in chapters earlier and after 52 and 53, uh, the one one verse talks about plucking out his beard and, and the spitting and the mocking and and uh, you know being disfigured and all, all of this kind of stuff that's talked about in this in this passage of, of scripture. Um, we we don't like as Christians we don't like to talk about that aspect of the sacrifice of the Christ event the um, Good Friday. The darkness of Good Friday is one of the events that we kind of look away from. We don't, we just can't. And we, we try, and, and again, as a culture, we try to pretty it up. We put it, we put a cross around our necks or on our steeples. If we, if we showed the ugliness of the cross, we would not, it would not be something we'd want to put around our necks or put up on our steeples. Um, uh, but we try to, we try to pretty it up. Um, one of the first things they did with the body, with, with the body of Christ as they took it down from the cross was they cleaned it up and they put perfumes on it. And we've been trying to clean it up and perfume it up uh, for centuries since uh, the Christ event. And yet, um, as we remember yesterday's uh, uh, devotional about communion and the Last Supper, Jesus was intent that we not forget what happened. Um, as as uh, he, he, you know, we take the bread and we uh, take the cup, and as he took that, and he said, he lifted it up, and he says, do this in remembrance of, of me. Uh, he was telling us, um, again, not, it wasn't about his ego trip, or that he, he had this, uh, I've, got, I've got to have a le legacy, or something like that, but it was, I want you to remember this, what's hap what happens to me in your bath. You cannot forget this. And so he was telling us, to, when he was, when he was telling us to, to celebrate the Lord's Supper, he was saying, remember this, don't forget this, what's about to happen to me. And every time we, we take the, uh, you know, the Lord's Supper together, um, we lift up the bread and we break the bread and we say, this is the, the body of Christ broken for you. And we, we do this thing where we, we um, break the bread. And I've, I've had um, uh, communion services where 
the the tricky part to there's a you know I'm a pastor I've been a pastor for years one of the tricky parts is making sure this bread gets broken sometimes you get this stretchy bread you know or, or that just kind of uh, just it's hard to break or you get this bread that's too too dry and it's you know it's, it's like brick or something like that and so it's hard to break and so the one of the tricks that uh, churches uh, have had for for years is that they would take a knife and they would cut the bread al almost in half. I don't know if you knew that we did that, but it, we, we cut the bread almost in half. So when it comes time for me to at the table to set, to lift up the bread and said, this is the body of Christ broken for you, it's already sliced um, halfway. And um, that's, that, that way the, it's, it's cut halfway so it's, it's easier to break. But, but, the, but the one thing I want to say about this, the death of Christ and, and the crucifixion and, and the cross was that it wasn't a clean cut. Um, it was messy. And uh, part of the communion event, part of the remembrance, part of what Jesus wants us always to remember is the things that he suffered for us and, and the, the graphic sufferings uh, are, are symbols uh, and remembrances that he wants us to keep because he took our suffering away. And there's something deep inside of us that says, uh, as we remember before him what he did, that says there's no way we can ever thank you. Why would you do this for me? Why would you love me this much to take my suffering? Um, so as we meditate on these passages, I hope you have a profound sense today of just how much Jesus loves you. Let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us. And as we once again come uh, to look at the Christ event Holy Passion Week, um, we ask your grace upon us. And may these truths that come straight from your scriptures from thousands of years ago to us, to remind us once again what was done for us, may these truths change us and draw us closer and closer and closer to Jesus, your Son. This is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. Have a great day today.